we are now on dashboards. You've already gone through uh, different parts of DHIS2 analytics. You already know uh, what pivot table is, what data visualizer is, uh, how do we use maps, also about scorecards. Um, previously, we also talked about a WHO data quality app, and there was also a dashboard in data quality app. So that is a separate dashboard which was dedicated to data quality, and that is inherent to that app which we were looking at at that point of time. So uh, that was app specific, but when we talk about just dashboards, not the quality dashboard, it is the dashboard that the user is having an access to and lands on when, as soon as the person is logging into the system. So the first thing that you see when you log into your DHIS2 instance is dashboards. Generally. Uh, the word dashboard, as uh, Pamod has told in the morning to, uh, uh, and basically on the first day as well, is uh, something that you see right in front. Even while we are driving, we have the dashboard right in front so that we can see a lot of things there. How exactly uh, is my speed doing while I'm driving? Is my car getting heated up? Or maybe uh, am, I, am I wearing a seatbelt or not? Is, uh, is it that my handbrake is uh, uh, applied or not? So well, things of that sort. So similar way, a dashboard can be designed to show what is important to you, what should be crucial and what, sh what should be shown to that user. Starting with it, uh, yeah. The objective of this session would be to navigate the features of DHISO dashboard, show you the steps to create a dashboard, share and manage a dashboard. Uh, it'll be just the basics about it because uh, I think uh, designing your dashboard as such is something uh, which, which is a skill that will improve over time. And uh, once you start using the dashboard, you get to uh, understand all these things of uh, how exactly it should be presented so that it is usable for multiple users and how exactly the same dashboard can be uh, reciprocated on different users uh, interfaces and all, the, all that. So uh, yeah, we will just look upon the small details that we'll be able to. Also, uh, showing you how to add previously created favorites objects on a dashboard. So basically you have already created these favorites. I suppose uh, there were favorites that you created in pivot tables, data visualizer and maps at least. And those favorites, uh, the ones that you've saved previously can now be used for configuring your dashboard that we are going to come upon uh, in the session uh, later on, I think. Uh, if possible, we'll do an exercise if time comes. Okay, so first and foremost, why should I create a dashboard at all? Why do I need a dashboard? So uh, those charts, tables, and maps that you have prepared in the system are something which are available inside those apps. And uh, do you think it will be convenient for a user to every time log into a, th that particular app and then access the favorite by finding it and then seeing it in order to monitor the program performance or any other any other tasks that he's supposed to do on a routine basis. I don't think it is quite inconvenient that way. So to basically easily have an access to all those visualizations, dashboard serves a purpose. Out here, you can easily view those charts, tables, maps that you're using more frequently. It might be that I am a malaria specific user and I'm supposed to on a daily basis see as to how many positive cases are being recorded in the system. Let's say I'm a program administrator sitting at the national level. And uh, obviously I'm supposed to have a record of how many positive cases are coming in a month. So for that purpose, I would definitely not want to open a single favorite somewhere through that app and then on a daily basis do the same exercise. Rather than that, I would want that to be displayed to me by itself. So for that purpose, I can use a dashboard. I can quickly monitor my program progress. I think it makes sense. Then establishing a routine for regularly checking key program aspects for my program and for my program managers, I think uh, it, it becomes crucial to look at their program aspects. A person who is from RM and CHA is supposed to look at all those fields. And unless and until I show that, the person at times might not really get engaged that well. The more I look at my data, the more I am informed and the more I can support my decision making processes. So for that routine looking at data, uh, dashboard enables a user in a better fashion. Then uh, it readily shares information with others with the capacity of DHIS2. You can prepare these dashboard in a, dashboards in a way that they get 
updated automatically. So uh, we, we, we have seen that in uh, various tools that we have, seen, we have covered so far, that uh, there is something called as a relative referencing of period that you can do. So let's say I have uh, specified on a given favorite that uh, I want to see data of last month. So as soon as I move over to the next month, the chart automatically gets updated and shows me the most updated figures. And that is of much more interest to me. I wouldn't want to see data of 2015 sitting out here in 2020, obviously. I want the most updated figures and I want to share that information as conveniently as possible. So dashboard is a very powerful tool for that. And furthermore, it also allows you to add some more things like texts and messages on the dashboard itself so that a person is uh, informed in a better way. It can have, uh, let's say, if I take an example of a text box, we will see all this. So that text box uh, can have some text which is available for all my users to see whosoever is having access to the dashboard. Uh, let's say it is, uh, it was a holiday um, uh, a few days ago in Sri Lanka. Let's say we all were uh, users for a system, a DHI system, and Pamud wanted to spread this information that it is going to be a holiday and we are not having uh, a session which, which will, uh, let's say we were not having a session on that day. First of all, that is the condition. <laughs> So if he wanted to spread that information, he could have just entered that text out there and that same text could have been seen by all of us. We, were, we are not receiving any messages or anything there. It is just on the dashboard, plain text. And now we are informed. It is kind of like a notice board for us, wherein we are seeing that, yes, okay, fine. This is the kind of information which is coming from my administrator. So this way, a lot of information can be disseminated using a dashboard, which is more convenient. And it allows you to monitor your things very, very conveniently. Does that make sense? If you have any questions, if you want to stop me anywhere, my uh, rules become, uh, I, I hope you remember from the last session that uh, you can interrupt me anywhere. I, I do not mind that. So please. Uh, okay, so an overview of the dashboard. So DHS to dashboard, these provide a quick access to different analytical objects. I think that is understandable. We've already covered that. And also the same dashboard once designed can be shared with a given user or maybe a group of users through user groups. We will also see this, how to do this. Yeah, so uh, I will go over to the instance now because I do not have time to go through the entire presentation. That is why I'm just skipping things and then moving over to the instance so that I can give all this in the form of a demonstration itself. Yeah. So let's go over here. Okay. So uh, that is the instance that we are using for this, which is Academy uh, Demos DHIS2 and in that the analytics one. So uh, shown over here, as soon as I log into the system is the dashboard. Can you see this? Uh, and on top of it out here is the control bar. This, the top where I'm hovering is called the control bar wherein I see all the dashboards which are configured for me. If I want to see the entire list, I have an option of show more. If I click over there, I can see that there are a lot of dashboards which have been shared with me and each is having a different name to it. That name represents what theme it belongs to. I can configure that name based on my own choices and uh, what, what suits my needs as such. Okay, yeah. So let's now look at different components that we have on this dashboard. First of all, let's say I, I want to visualize this HIV national that, that I'm taking it as an example for delivering this session. Uh, for this HIV national dashboard, the data which corresponds to it, I, I, I think uh, it is obviously understood uh, that uh, it corresponds to HIV and uh, it is national indicators that I'm seeing here. Uh, mostly if you look at um, all these charts, it is corresponding to the entire country that is training land. The data is for all the districts or uh, the trends for the entire country and things of that sort. So that is why HIV national. I have a button, this one, the I button. If I click on that, it gives me some details. This dashboard covers areas of HIV program focusing on the HIV cascade and ART. So this kind of a description of that dashboard can be 
provided and can be accessed by clicking on this i button we will see where do we provide this detail then uh, another feature is bookmarking so if i have like a long list of dash dashboards let's say out here we have somewhere around 20 dashboards then out of this if two are there that are more uh, important for me or maybe i look at those two dashboards on a more regular basis then i can bookmark those two dashboards like the way we do for our web pages on any google browser or at any other places so bookmarking is done by clicking on this star icon the moment i click on it the ones which are star marked are aligned in the first uh, heads i think uh, it is it is sorted in that fashion then uh, yeah so that is bookmarking also can you see this plus button given out here this button is called the add dashboard button from where you can add a new dashboard and next to it is this magnifying glass if i click over here and type some text then i can filter out my dashboards which are shown on the control bar here so let's say i want to see something which is corresponding to malaria the moment i write malaria then only the dashboards which are having that as a text field given out here in that uh, will be sorted out and then i can access any of it so th those were like general things which are available for your use uh, i am if i am going past please stop me ask me uh yeah so the next thing that we we we'll look upon is how do we now maneuver this particular dashboard which is uh, shown in front of us how do we manipulate data on it how do we further uh, find out some more things from this for that purpose i have an add filter button which is shown over here this one the moment i click on add filter it gives me multiple selections you can see period and organization unix i hope you are aware of this you are already well acquainted to what are periods and what is organization unix that is the when and the where component of dhis2 that we have looked upon in various apps so i have my filters which i can apply on this dashboard to find out some particular information let's look at each of this for selecting a period of interest i can click on period the moment i click on it this kind of a pop up box comes up wherein you can specify a period of your interest presently if you look at this chart let's suppose this one you have june july and august being shown on this chart right now and uh, it, whether if i look at this one it has got last 12 months so those are like two different periods being shown on the same dashboard the moment i go over to add filter and apply a period of let's say uh, the last 3 months and confirm it all my dashboard favorites all of the these tiles are favorites coming in from different analysis apps uh, like pivot table data visualizer and gis uh, that is the maps so uh, now you can see that all of this is filtered to only show data corresponding to the period that i have selected that is last three months and as a uh, i can say program manager if i am reviewing my system if i am having a meeting let's say with all my stakeholders and i'm already interested in seeing data of the last three months for this particular review then i can use this kind of a filter to only show that data and accordingly convene my meeting so that is one filter that we have used right now let's say in this i want to further only see data of bird district i am reviewing only bird district right now for that i can go to add filter in organization unit i have multiple options to specify my organization unit of interest one way of doing it is by drilling it down that is called the organization unit hierarchy as you are aware from this hierarchy i can choose my organization unit that i am interested in if it is bird district i can click on it and confirm the moment i do that now you can see there are two different filters which are applied 
it is similar to the way we use in Excel or any other tools. So by using these two filters, I can now see that the data, let's say in this favorites, is being shown for bird district, mm -hmm. and that is only for these three months, that is the last three months. And accordingly, it is the same in all others that are being shown. Even if you look at these uh, maps outputs, it is just one district that I'm seeing. I'm not seeing anything else. I'm not seeing the other districts here on the same chart. So this way I can use my filters. If I want to now remove these filters for that purpose, either I can reload, the moment I reload, everything is uh, shifted back to where it was. Or I can click on this, the remove button given here. And this way you can remove these filters to return back to where your original position on the dashboards. I hope it is clear so far. Uh, I hope my co-facilitators are looking at your comments and if, if there is anything, they're taking care of it. Now we've just seen uh, what are descriptions and interpretations. I think Pamo did talk about it. So uh, on this particular dashboard, which is being shown over here, one option to uh, access the interpretations is by clicking over here. I think that was demonstrated by Pamo just now. So I'm, I'm leaving that. Another way is if I click on these three dots at the corner of each favorite, then I can have all these things uh, open up for me. If you look at each of this, then uh, the, the favorite that I'm accessing is basically a visualizer output. Uh, I hope that you can decipher from the chart type. Presently it is a bar chart. That is why it is coming in from data visualizer, had it been, uh, you can access a table. So this kind of an output is from a pivot table. While if I look at this one, this comes from maps. So accordingly, my options, which will be displayed to me will be sorted out in that, that fashion. This coming in from data visualizer allow, gives me an option of opening it in data visualizer app. If I want to further, uh, make some changes in the dashboard, or maybe I want to further drill down this information, make some modifications to elude more information. All that is possible if I go over to the data visualizer and use the entire capacity of that app to expand this information. Otherwise, I have an option of viewing this same visualizer output as a table. The moment I click on view as table, it gets converted into a table. It is not a permanent change. It is just for my visualization right now. Similarly, if I reload this, it is going to return back to where it was, the original setting. I can also convert this to a map. Uh, it is not showing any data because if you look at this, it is of multiple periods and it is of multiple indicators. And if you remember from the map session, it was uh, only, in, only one of the two things that you could see in a given time. So yes, so that is an option for you to change your visualization and to see if, if it fits your needs. And finally, the last option here is to show interpretations and details. The moment I click on it, something of this sorts comes up. The thing which is given out here, this part is the description that has been given for each favorite. So for this chart, my administrator has given that it shows HIV positive tests PLHIV new, newly on ART and the ones retained on treatment over the past 12 months for monitoring HIV program effectiveness for test and treat policy and retention on treatment over time. So that is the description that the person has given. Further to this, if somebody has given any interpretations for this, out here you can see Priyanka has uh, sent an information, an interpretation to Pamod, wherein he's asking him, do you see any abnormality in HIV test positives? If so, could you please look into that? So he wanted to share, share interpretation and ask Pamo to do something. So this kind of a data to action, that is what I think Pamo talked about since morning. So uh, that can be used out here and you can access all that by clicking on the fourth option. Presently it has converted to hide interpretation in detail and I can do that to close that extra window which appeared. I hope it was fine so far. Can I move to the next thing? Okay. 
So another feature out here is this is version 2.34 that we are looking at, DHIS 2, 2.34. In this, what they have done is uh, they have now, in order to increase the performance of this particular instance, what they've done is they have enabled progressive loading for these dashboards. What exactly is that? The moment I go over to some other dashboard, let's say immunization maps, can you see these charts have been loaded? But Others get loaded when I land upon them, not until I go over and hover over those charts. So only the pane which is available for my use uh, in my interface right now would be loaded first so that my system performs in a better way. It is not loading everything together. Had it been everything getting loaded together, then it might have been possible that something out here would get loaded first while I'm struggling with the first one. So to, to increase that performance uh, and to address that performance issue, they have enabled this feature, which is, I think, uh, very handy for me because uh, I, I like this feature wherein I, I'm able to first see what, what I am presently viewing. Uh, going further, let's look at uh, how, how uh, reactive are these favorites which are being shown to me. Let's take some other ones. Uh, Let's look at this, wherein we have a trend of the newly diagnosed uh, people, uh, HIV positives, and then the ones who are newly on ART. Can you see it shows different numbers? The moment I hover over any of these dots, it is actually showing me the exact value. I can also do that for the other line. The moment I shift over to the blue one, the other one gets a little faded, so that the other, uh, so the one uh, I am accessing presently is the one which is being shown to me more prominently. So this way, is, it has been designed in a way that it is more interactive to you. If let's say in a given situation, I am not interested in seeing the PLHIV new on ERT, what I can do is I can just click over here on this, and it changes to only show me one indicator, not the both of them. I can do the same for period filters too. So if I have June, July, and August being shown to me, can you see this? The moment I hover over anything, that is the one which is being shown prominently there. If I want to remove August from this, I can do that by clicking on August and it only shows me June and July there. If in any given case, uh, because it is having too much data being shown together, that is why it is not able to, uh, it is not showing me any data for August and July in this particular case. So if I'm not showing, seeing that data, then what I can do is I can take my cursor there and the moment I reach that bar, it gives me the exact figure of August 2020. So you can be rest assured that all your data, if you're not able to see those numbers at that given time, then there is a way to see that. You can take your cursor over there and it is going to give you that box to show you the right count. Uh, I have something on chat. Yeah. So that is something about reactivity of uh, these charts. Also, uh, uh, it is not just the map visualizer or uh, pivot table outputs. It is also the outputs from your scorecard app that you can uh, add onto your dashboards. If I take you to immunization, then in this, at the bottom of it, we have a scorecard output which has been uh, added to your same dashboard. So this has been done by adding a scorecard widget. You can, you can do that. It is available on the DHIS2 apps. Uh, online if you search on Google, then you can find these apps and you can ask your system administrator to add it to your instance. And then you can make use of it if you, if you are interested in using scorecards. And if your project is already having scorecard app added to your system. So as you can see over here, it is that entire scorecard which has been designed like the way you were doing with Priyanka. And uh, in this, I can do the same manipulations that I was doing inside the app. If I want to 
find out more information for this particular figure in bird district i can click on it and it opens up this box wherein i have details of bird district in 2019 if i want to add more periods to it i can do that i can change it to let's say showing these three years and i can update it so this way i can drill down find out more information change the layout everything that was possible inside the school card app i can also sort these values and everything else so those, that interactivity of scorecard app is also retained while i'm using that on the dashboard itself. okay so that's about how how you can manipulate things out here and how you can produce more information for yourself now let's look very briefly into how do we add a new dashboard i can understand i'm going too fast but i want to relieve you on time that is why i'm doing that so by clicking on this plus icon given over here, I can allow myself to add a new dashboard. Can you see uh, this particular field where you can give a title? I want to make a new dashboard with the name test. So I have given that. I also have an option to provide a description like the one our models explained to you. Uh, description can be given in the uh, in the visualizer or pivot table outputs in your analytics outputs or you can also provide a description for a dashboard like the way we just saw so let's say this is test so i want to give it this detail then finally we come over to this field wherein you have an option to search different favorites or things that you want to add to your dashboard. If you look at this list, the first part is visualizations, wherein you can see these different outputs which correspond to the data visualizer app. So whatever has been created as a favorite there and has been saved can be seen out here in this list and that you can add on to your dashboard. The second part is corresponding to maps. Then comes reports. These reports are your HTML reports if any has been added to your system. Then also for your apps like the scorecard widget, we'll see that right now. And uh, similar way you can also search by adding a text there. Let's say I want to prepare something for PCG and I want to add a uh, second one bcg coverage by month last three years then i can insert it i'm just hovering over it and this insert button is enabled clicking on that is going to add it to your dashboard here again similar way add something related to uh math app. let's say bcg coverage by district in last month and i can also insert it i've just added two things right now for now designing your dashboard you can drag things by taking your cursor over that and the moment you take your cursor this kind of an icon appears click and then drag yeah this way i can drag my dashboard favorites i can also resize these five favorites by going over here bottom right and the moment i see this icon this icon I can then click over there and then again drag to resize. Let's say I want to give it this size. So I can do that. Similar way if I want to shorten this, I can do that too. So this way I can change my sizes for these favorites. The other, I can also see it uh, in the entire screen. So all those options you can explore, I think later on. You also have the legions, and all of this. Let's move ahead. Uh, so we have an option. I did talk about text box, I think, when I was starting with my presentation. So as additional items, you have three options, a text box, a messages button, and also a spacer. Let's insert each of this and then see how exactly it affects my dashboard. Yeah, I've added all three. Let's try to design it. 
I want to provide a spacer on the top. Let's say this big a spacer. I want to provide a message box, which is of this size. And I want to provide a text box, which comes in between these two. Yeah. Well, so this depends on you. You can choose the way you want to show your things. I'm just designing it like an artist here. Okay, let's stick to this right now and just uh, add some text here. Mm. Um, announcement. And I save it. Can you see the effect which my spacer has given here? I can see see a blank space on top of messages. This portion that comes in from the space. So at the time of designing your dashboard, if you want to make something, some some space out there that you can do with help of. Next thing is messages. All my messages that I've received in the system can be displayed out here. I do not need to go over here and then access it. I can see my messages right on my dashboard in this case. Also, whatever has been added as the text field, I cannot really edit it unless and until I have an authority to edit the dashboard. And this can serve a purpose of a notice board for all your users, something that they can readily access as soon as they log in. I hope that makes sense. If you want me to stop somewhere, you can do that. I'm repeating that. I'm again going on edit. And let's finally look at how do we add scorecard favorites. For that purpose, out here, I'm going to write scorecard. So there is this apps scorecard widget that I can insert on my dashboard. Let's say I want to put this uh, just uh, at the end. So I can then drag it. In this, I, I have the entire list of scorecards which are present in my system, uh, which are already configured. Let's say I want to use group tense malaria coverage scorecard that I can select. Are you sure you want to add this to your scorecard dashboard? Yes. The moment I do that, the thing which they have configured for their scorecard is being displayed on my dashboard right now. I can then save it and we can start using the dashboard when well, you have your spacer some messages being shown a text box that i've used a gis favorite uh, that is the maps favorite which is being shown then a trend of bcg coverage by month last three years you can see months given here and lastly a scorecard favorite that i've added which is group tense malaria coverage. So this way you can add different components and can basically design your dashboard. How exactly do you want it to appear? Okay. Uh, yeah, so that was the first part of the presentation. The next thing is how do we now share it with different users? So I have prepared a dashboard. This dashboard is my private dashboard right now. Uh, how, how do I make it available for other users to see? Let's say I'm a, uh, I'm a district level person and I want the same thing to be seen by my facility level staff. Just that, uh, that particular uh, dashboard is supposed to only show data which is corresponding to their facility. How do I do that? For doing that, I need to first check whether my favorites, which are affixed on this dashboard, are uh, having a selection of user definition in their organization unit selection. How do I check it? Let's say I want to do it for this particular favorite right now. For that purpose, I'm going to click on these three dots and then open it in the corresponding app. That is the maps app in this case. Going over here, I have uh, different selections. 
this is the thematic layer which is corresponding to the thing which is being shown to me i can click on this pencil edit i am not diving into the details of all of this because you've already seen it and i jump over to organization units in organization units i cannot it says it is not possible to combine user organization units and select individual units that is uh, a situation which is which is being shown to us and it it is true for all the analytics apps that we have it can either be uh, that my organization unit selection is defined by levels or groups or otherwise i can select it based on my user settings presently this particular favorite uses a user based setting let's see what difference it makes by selecting the others let's make it main and deselect my 2x below and update this layer by selecting main it is ideally supposed to show me the data of training land possibly it is not having a boundary for that that is why i'm not seeing anything let's change it to one level below that and update layer it is only showing me two regions i am a country level user so the next level to me would be the two regions that is why two different shapes being shown and lastly the 2x below update it so now it is showing me districts because that is kind of like the grandchildren for the country level person children of children so this ways i can show different districts to my country level person but let's say the same favorite is being accessed by a, a regional person then he or she is going to see still the next level which is the health facilities if you look at the hierarchy here then in this particular use case we have country under that is regions under regions we have districts and lastly under district we have health facilities so a person belonging to regional level will have the facilities as the sub units into two organization units so this same selection will allow my regional level person to see facilities as well if i share this favorite with the user who shares it with me fine so that is the way i i set my user settings the user selections as a parameter for my uh, preparation of these favorites i go back to varun yes yes please can, can you show us this in uh, in pivot table and data visualizer yeah sure i can so let's see so let's take another favorite can I, can i use this one would that do i can open this in data visualizer app in here in my organization unit selections i have different options available presently we have only selected training land i can shift this to show user organization unit i am a person who is assigned at country level i want to see the entire trend for my country the whole country for that purpose if i select user organization unit that is the level i am assigned to i can serve the same purpose and i can now update it okay so this way is i have a uh, training land uh, entire trend being shown and i can then go ahead and save it so that the same is saved for that favorite which has been uh, which has been displayed on my dashboard let's see what difference it makes for the same chart So what I'll do is I'll go over to this button, the button which is given over here. First of all, the edit button is going to be for editing this dashboard. I think that is understandable. If I want to make any changes, I can go over to edit and make any of the changes that I've done while configuring that dashboard. This again depends on the authorities that you have defined for your users. I will try to touch upon it in minute details right after the thing that I'm covering. Look, I click on share. and in my share i can uh, take an example of sharing it with and i can also share it with okay let's take just this cat district and i 
have shared that person uh, th that dashboard to this person and i only give an authority to can view so i think you have already covered uh, sharing settings as well in one of the sessions so uh, by defining whether the person can only view these things or can also edit you are restricting that person from doing certain tasks the moment i have an authority to edit something then i can make changes and those changes will be reflected for all the other users whosoever is accessing that particular metadata as we call in uh, in strict terms so i am changing it to just viewing and then closing it so this dashboard the test dashboard has now been shared with cat district i will uh, similar way uh, i have already done a homework for you people here for my other dashboards like uh, malaria burden reduction i've already shared this dashboard with some users uh, which is a user group in this case malaria admin and this user group contains my district level managers so district level managers one amongst them is also cat district so this way you can share it with a group of users too user groups is a wide topic i'm not touching it right now but uh, just to give you an understanding you can group your users let's say one type of users the facility level users or maybe the country level users one type of users together in one user group so that you can do your actions together for all of these people right now this malaria admin group contains my district level program managers i just close this log out and log in with another user which is cat district manager let's see what is being shown on that person's dashboard here i prepared a dashboard with the name test can you see this the test dashboard the moment this person now accesses the test dashboard out here the trend which is being shown to this person is only of cat district and not of the entire country that is because this person is now assigned to only that district level and is not having access to the other districts and that is why that data is not included here does that make sense any difficulties in understanding this you can Ask me to repeat it. Oh, another question, maybe. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Uh, I had I, I had an experience of I have shared the the dashboard, mm -hmm. but sometimes it's related to the user uh, the user privilege, mm -hmm. and they can't see the data in the dashboard. They can see the dashboard, but they are not able to see the the, the visualization or the bit. Uh, a graph or a, a table yes yes that can happen so uh, if my uh, my selections for that given favorite like for this one i showed you right i have selected it in a way wherein it is user defined whatever uh, is the level of assignment for that user that is being taken up for showing data for this table it is not other districts that it is showing data for right so if that kind of a setting has not been done then the user is not having an access to other data and hence the favorite is not going to load first thing the second thing is if i have not shared this with the users let's say that particular favorite has been placed in a way that it is a private setting it belongs to only my user and i have not shared it with other users in public domain then the other users will not be able to see anything on that dashboard unless until you share it the favorite as well does that make sense can i move ahead i have some chats here please repeat it when i am got this talk hi uh, there are a few questions for yeah. yeah please yeah. please please uh, is regarding the feature Tension. I I would like to know that you know like uh, uh because of you know in order to have a dashboard we will you know uh, need to create a data visualizer and then you know create a favorite, and uh, and within this favorite there will be a different period which we be uh, we we have selected. So 
I would like to know, you know, uh, if we apply the filter in the dashboard, did, uh, does it, you know, uh, taken over other period? Like for example, I have uh, like choosing, like for this one, the cash risk rate, you know, the PCG coverage is mm -hmm. say here is less three years. But mm -hmm. if I uh, use the filter in the period, like uh, around like uh, less six months, something like that, that is that data will be you know, automatic, automatically apply to, to this as well? Yes, yes. It is going to override all your selections. So if you can see out here right now, then it has changed my selection to just show me the last six months, right? Previously, it was a lot of months which were being shown on the same trend. It, it overrides it and only shows you that. But okay. changes only for the time being. It is presently on my display. The moment I reload this, the change is gone and my filter is automatically removed. I get my original. Oh, thing. oh I see. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, you know, is there any way like people, because like right now, if we apply the filter, the, uh, the, the title didn't match with the period. So, you know, what's uh, the critical way yeah. to, to apply this that in the-, is, in the uh, That is a little tricky because uh, it is not possible for us to change the name by your selections. Uh, obviously, this is the name that you have given while saving that particular favorite. So that is the favorite's name. But the filter you're applying is for that dashboard. It is not anything to do with the fil uh, filter which has been used for preparing this favorite, right? So uh, the only way to find out what filter has been applied is uh, by following this this, uh, I would say the button which appears. So if, if you have last six months being shown like this on top of it, then it is understood that a filter has been applied for all the favorites which are being shown. All right, so, all right, uh, thank you. Yeah. I think I have other things on chat. Uh, yes. Uh, Pramod, do we have any, any other questions or should I move ahead or I think there are some interests to even wrap up the session. <laughs> yeah, can I move ahead? Pamut? Yes, sir. yes, please. Okay, sure. Yeah, so that was about sharing, just brief. If you can see right now, uh, the difference it makes is uh, the difference it makes is it doesn't show me any option to edit out here for this dashboard because while sharing this dashboard to uh, CAT district, I only allowed an authority to view things and not to edit. So that level of definition of privileges can also be done while doing sharing. And it is also a component in users that I will touch upon just right after this. Uh, if I go over to malaria reduction uh, or burden reduction dashboard, similar way, uh, I can uh, I can see out here right now that it is showing some data for training land. So these ones. Uh, it is showing training land data because it has not been given that kind of a user definition based selection in the favorites. While the ones uh, like this, wherein you are seeing cat district, they have been configured in a way wherein I have user selection as a method for my organization unit definition. I hope that demarcation comes out to be clear here. Okay, yeah. So I go back to logging out and logging in with my admin user. So uh, yeah, so that, that was part one and part two. I was supposed to actually allow you to do an activity in between, but I didn't do that because we were running short of time here. And uh, that was uh, the presentation that I wanted to give. I actually cut you have cut it short, but yeah, I hope you, it, it did make some sense. Last part is uh, I wanted to just touch upon some things in users. 
Uh, this is generally done by your system administrators, not everybody. So you'll generally not have an access to all of this in your country settings. Your system administrators, you can ask them to do all that. But out here, in your user roles, uh, let's say I make a new user role here. Uh, in this, specifically for dashboards, right dashboard here, then I have an authority of just providing dashboard app. So by only giving dashboard app is saying that the person is able to see dashboard app. And that is something that you're supposed to definitely give to all users so that on landing into the system, they have something to see. That is why it is something that you should definitely make sure that everybody gets all the user roles have this. Then another setting for dashboards is in metadata wherein uh, you have an option of adding, updating public and then adding, updating private. The moment a person is able to see dashboard app, he or she can make their own favorites if they have an access to analytic tools and configure their private dashboards. So that should not be a problem for anybody. And that is uh, encouraged so that the person prepares something for their own monitoring purposes. But you can uh, add, uh, you can, you can uh, add or remove this setting of adding, updating public dashboards. That is, uh, you can restrict that person to only preparing dashboards to, for themselves and not being able to share it with other users. So just this, these two things, uh, you can ask your system administrators to see what authorities they are actually providing to your users and uh, have, a, have a check on this because sometimes if you're not having these, then it is a goof up and uh, your users then uh, tend to get bugged at times. So yeah, that was something that I wanted to definitely touch upon. Okay, so that was about it in the demonstration part of it. Now you know how to prepare your dashboards. So that is the icon for dashboards, this one. Uh, in your apps menu, if you're somewhere else and you want to come back to the dashboards, out here, this is the icon for dashboards. Previously, it used to be a little different. It was a radar which used to be shown there, but uh, now they've changed it to this one. Yeah, fine. So now you know how to make your dashboards and how to share your dashboards and also some more stuff that we have touched upon here. Similar way, you have some visualizations that you can do through uh, different options that are given out here which help you in further seeing some data, making meaning of, let's say this visualization, I want to see a legion, then I have a legion given out here and things of that sort. So yeah, that was dashboards. Now the next thing is doing your exercises. There are two parts to your exercise. You're supposed to go over to Moodle. In Moodle, uh, the last part is creating and sharing dashboards. Additional, I think it is, not ungraded. Yeah, well, I think uh, we will have to explain which one will be graded uh, because there were some ungraded ones so mentioned in the guide. So, uh, do you want to do that? No, uh, please proceed. Okay. So, in this, uh, what you're supposed to do is first of all, you're supposed to uh, create dashboards. So, creation part of it, I think, is clear to you. You're supposed to go on that button, create dashboard. Uh, I'll just read through the ins instructions for you and uh, after that because you're supposed to start with it and we are definitely running short of time. So you're supposed to review your previous items. You, I think, already have prepared some pivot table charts and maps favorites. Uh, so you're supposed to use those ones and think about how can you group them together as dashboards. Uh, then uh, are there any scenarios where you want these dashboards to contain data from multiple programs? So is it that you're making a program, uh, you're making a dashboard for your, uh, let's say the director, the executive director for your health department. If you're doing that, then it, it is supposed to comprise different components from let's say RMNCHA, also some key components of malaria, something from blindness, so different data sets. So uh, th that is up to you. How do you want to define your uh, dashboards? Also, while you, you are starting with it, you're supposed to follow this kind of a 
table wherein you will be giving a dashboard name. This is for your easier understanding and for you to discuss, I think. Had it been just one person, we would not have asked you to make this kind of a table or anything. So uh, you're supposed to fill this table wherein you are giving it a name, then choosing what favorites are you using and what type of favorites are these. And then discuss and uh, uh, amongst your group and then come in consensus, consensus of how exactly would it be more appealing. You're supposed to finally create two dashboards uh, from this table that you'll be preparing. And uh, while you prepare that, please remember to add your initials, uh, maybe group eight or group nine, whatever group you're belonging to, that initial before the dashboard so that we can understand that this has been prepared by you. And uh, this can be uh, one dashboard belonging to your one of the programs, let's say HIV or malaria or any other data set. And the other one can be an overall monitoring dashboard for a country level person. So that you can design. Uh, try to keep these dashboards uh, fixed in a way, all these favorites configured in a way, which is, uh, which is allowing your users to see data as per their level of assignment, the user definition part of it. So that, after doing that, the part two of this exercise is, uh, you're supposed to now uh, share these dashboards with, I think there are some messages coming over on chats. Oh, okay. Yeah, so out here, uh, you're supposed to then sit together and then decide on who do you want to share it with. And uh, then take one of the dashboards that you have made and items should be, uh, should, should be designed in a way that it is showing some data for the district level person too. So I would advise you to use favorites in a way that it is showing you either user level data or user into uh, user subunit level data because after districts you just have one level which is the facilities you do not have anything beyond facilities in your hierarchy so uh, user into two would not show anything to a district level person i hope that makes sense uh, so you're supposed to make that setting and then share this dashboard with district managers user group and only provide view permission do not provide view and edit. I, I, I hope you understand the implications of the two. And then you can try to log in with this, the same login that I have used, and then see whether the dashboard you have prepared is being shown to this user and what data is then being shown over here. So that is a exercise that you're supposed to do. It is a group exercise and you're supposed to work on this. I think it has been uh, written as an ungraded practice, but then yes, dashboard is a key session here and that is why we are going to grade you for this. Very sorry. Sorry, we, could, we should have given you time for this, but we could not. And yes, uh, so Varun, uh, one more thing. Now, uh, are they supposed yeah. to submit uh, screenshots? Yes, they should. Uh, I, I, I think, uh, Screenshots, we can even rule away. Maybe, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, if, if, if it is convenient, then we can do that. Otherwise, uh, we can also ask them to submit the names of the dashboards and then we can review it. Would that be fine, Pamu? Pamu? Okay, yeah, which are we is comfortable. Yeah, yeah, I mean, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. No, I think yeah, okay. taking those yes, screenshots can, uh, and everything is a little lengthy. If it is a longer dashboard. Okay, fine. The names then. Right, fine. Yeah, so just configuration is uh, fine. You don't have to submit any screenshots. And we will have uh, this assignment open till 2 p.m. tomorrow. So you can do it even tomorrow. But tomorrow, the other thing is like you will anyway have uh, the comprehensive uh, uh, assignment that you will have to do individually. Uh, so maybe you can start with group work and then uh, proceed to the constitutive exercise. But anyway, for those of you who will be uh, continuing with the group assignments, I will have the breakout rooms open uh, for uh, maybe one and a half more hours so that you can continue. Okay, then thank you so much, Varun. Uh, so we will just hang around in the Slack. Uh, so if there's any questions, uh, just ask us. We will uh, open the breakout rooms within like two minutes time. And we will also um, upload the updated exercise, uh, the assignment shortly. 
Yes, tomorrow's individual assignments will be graded. Yes.